Hey, Five Finance family, welcome to this edition of Flip It with Samara, another tutorial edition. So throughout this series, we've been sharing with you some tools that I have created and have personally used um, for my benefit throughout my uh, finance journey. And so I wanted to share those same tools with you too, right? And I'm sure throughout the series, you've seen how passionate I am about the tools that I created, how much joy it brings me um, in creating and sharing these tools with all of you. Um, so today is going to be no different, right? Another tool to add to your arsenal while you are on this financial journey. And this is a very timely, very appropriate tool. Um, right now is the season for buying a home or getting a mortgage, um, being that it's in the springtime, which is when most people make that decision, right? Trying to get ready um, before the school year begins. And so this tool is designed to do just that. It is our debt to income ratio calculator, all right, DTI. And so you've probably um, heard of this terminology before, especially if you are starting your process or starting your journey of looking for a home or trying to purchase a home. Um, this term gets thrown around a lot by mortgage lenders especially, and probably by your real estate agent as well. Um, so I wanna first talk about like what DTI is. What is debt to income ratio? So your debt to income ratio is just simply put the amount of debt you owe in comparison to the amount of income you have coming in. So you can imagine, right? If you um, remember us talking about the 50, 30, 20 rule, um, we are definitely going to look at that 50, 30, 20 rule again here, right? Telling us how much we should have allocated to essentials, how much we should have allocated to um, wants, and then how much we should have allocated to savings, right? Um, so you want to make sure that when you're looking at your debt to income ratio in its entirety, that it is definitely something um, that is going to be manageable and something that is below the uh, sought after rate, I should say, okay? So you should never have more debt than you have income coming in, simply put, right? And to get even um, more, um, uh, I should say, financially savvy, um, you definitely wanna make sure that your DTI is what um, lenders consider to be healthy, okay? That term healthy is going to be used a lot along your financial journey, right? Um, so you want to make sure that you have a healthy debt-to-income ratio, a healthy DTI. And so um, industry standard says that a healthy DTI is anything that is 40% or lo lower. So 40% of your income should be attributed to debt no more than 40 percent of your total income should be attributed to debt right um, that's what your DTI should look like now lenders go a step further um, when you're trying to buy a home and they said they want you to have a DTI of about 30 to 35 percent right so 30 to 35 percent of your income should be attributed to debt and that's it okay um, so with that in mind, we are going to now present to you the DTI calculator, right? Now that we gave you some background on what DTI is, um, now we're going to present to you the calculator that we created to help you manage your DTI and help you keep um, track of making sure you stay with a good healthy or obtain a good healthy DTI, right? Okay, so... Um, the first view that you're going to see here is, um, and I'm going to back up. So this is the intro, right? So again, with all of my tools, I always give you an introduction as to what the purpose of the tool is and then how to navigate through the actual tool so that you can use it accurately. All right. And right. Always have those screenshots so that it helps you better understand how to use the tool and maneuver in the tool, all right? So um, here's that 50-30 rule, right, that I mentioned, right? So the essentials, 50%, your wants, 30%, your savings, 20%, right? That's how you should have your income laid out. So 
Definitely um, your DTI calculator will uh, will aid you in making sure that you are also um, utilizing that 50-30 rule accurately, as well as some other tools that we have been mentioning throughout this series. So hopefully you have found like this entire series to be helpful, right? I know it's a lot of information. That's why we broke it up into weeks because we didn't wanna overwhelm you with all of the tools that we have created for your success. Like I said, these are tools that I have personally used and have found them to be successful in my life. So I wanted to share them with you, right? But I also wanted to give you some background on to, um, as to how you can properly utilize the tools in your life as well, okay? So hopefully um, throughout this series, you are gonna be able to utilize these tools and you have found it to be very helpful and insightful at the least, okay? All right, so the DTI, the debt to income ratio calculator tool is shown on the screen now. So on the screen, um, you can see that you have the areas of your monthly income. This is where you can put all of your monthly income Okay, you can separate it um, by paychecks. Um, if you wanna say, hey, this is your income versus your spouse's income, you can separate it like that as well. Or you can put it all on one line. Does not matter, however you wanna record that. I just want you to understand that this is the area where your monthly income should be entered, okay? Um, and then you have all of your monthly expenses, okay? So here we have some categories that are pre-populated for you. But feel free um, to change these should you need to, all right? So let's say maybe you don't have personal care, but there's another category that you want to put there. You can definitely do that. Like, let's say that you use uh, rideshare services a lot. Maybe you want to put rideshare there, okay? So feel free to make these your own. Personalize these categories so that they fit with your lifestyle, okay? Um, but I just wanted to give you a few to get you started, get the gears kind of um, moving in your head and get you thinking about all of the expenses that you are incurring on a monthly basis. Now, I want to say this before we go further with this tool. This DTI tool that is shown here, right, is not going to be the DTI tool that a lender would use, okay? Because remember, DTI is debt to income okay this view right here is showing monthly expenses to monthly income right so this tool was designed to give you an overall view okay of how healthy all the money that is coming in and all the money that is going out it shows you how healthy um that that um your monthly expenses to income is looking. So not necessarily debt to income, but expenses to income. That probably would have been a better um, wording for this tool. So this gives you a view of how healthy your expenses to income is, okay? On a monthly basis. So um, you would, like I said, update the income and then you would update your various expenses. And you can see like in real time, that as we um, add to our expenses, two things are changing, right? This total expense line is changing, right? And this percentage is changing as well, okay? So if our income is not increasing, but our expenses are increasing, what happens to our debt to income ratio or our debt to expense ratio? It goes up, right? It gets worse. So the higher that um, ratio is, the worse that looks, that is unhealthy, right? Remember I say you wanna target something that's 40% or below. So if this goes up, the goal is though also this should go up, right? To kind of lower that ratio, okay? So if your expenses are going up, it's a good idea to make sure that the income is going up too. If you can't raise your income, then lower your expenses. But either way, you want to make sure that you're targeting a healthy debt to income ratio, a healthy ratio of 40% or below, right? And the key to do that is to um, make sure that you are properly managing the money, right? So talking about that money manager that we mentioned in a previous slide, right? Um, make sure that you're utilizing that properly so that you can maintain a good, healthy 
debt to income ratio, right? So that's the way that this tool works, right? It's just easy plugging in some numbers here. Like I said, if you wanted to plug in your spouse's income there, it's gonna capture it all. That income line is now changing. The expenses didn't change because we didn't add the expense, but because we increased that income, you see what happened, that DTI went down, okay? So very, very um, cool tool to use um, just to see where you are from a debt to expense <laughs> ratio point of view. Now, on to the next tool, the lender tool. So if you are someone who is looking at um, purchasing your home, whether it's your first home or a new home or investment property, whatever you have, whatever it may be, um, you want to make sure that you are at a good DTI because this is what the lender is going to be looking at in order to determine whether you can afford the home or not, okay? Um, and so your lender is only looking at true debt, right? This is a true debt to income ratio. This is not the one that I created for myself, which is more of a debt to monthly expense ratio. This is a true debt to income ratio, okay? Or I should say a, um, sorry, monthly expenses to income ratio. I think I said that wrong. Anyways, all right, so in this particular scenario, we have our income over here, much like on the last tool. So you can definitely add to your income here, right? You can make these changes and you see as we make those changes, it is definitely increasing that total income line. Um, and then if you notice, there's not a lot of lines, not a lot of things that are considered um, when a lender is looking to see if you can afford um, the particular mortgage. So we are looking at the same areas that the lender will be looking at. So they're going to be looking at what the um, proposed mortgage or rent is. So let's say that your mortgage is going to be um, about $2,000 for this home that you're trying to purchase. Um, let's say that you have outstanding loans of about $1,500. Your credit cards, let's say it's about $2,000. And let's say, I don't know, you have, um, your credit cards wouldn't be that much a month, huh? Let's say they're about 500 and let's say your loans may be about another 500 a month. Um, and then let's say that your car note, uh, let's say it's only 350, right? Okay. So with that being said, right, this is what your total monthly expenses are. And so based on your monthly income shown over here of $8,000, you have a debt to income ratio of 42%, right? So that means 42% of your monthly income is going towards your monthly debt, okay? Um, so definitely an awesome tool to use just to see, hey, can would I even qualify, right? Because if this number was astronomically higher than 40%, like you wouldn't even be able to qualify for a mortgage that was $2,000 or more, right? So, and then you may say, well, what if I can get my mortgage down to $1,500? Ooh, that makes me look even more attractive to the lender, right? So again, the lenders are looking at the DTI from the aspect of, hey, are you going to be able to afford to pay us back, right? How much risk are we taking if we extend this loan to this particular buyer, Okay, that's what they're looking at. And so the lower this number is, the less risk they feel that they are taking, the less chances that you have as the borrower to default on the loan. And so they are willing to take risk, right, on when this number is lower versus someone who has a DTI of, call it 45% or more, right? So an awesome tool to use, um, especially, like I said, if you're a first-time home buyer or you are thinking about purchasing a second home or um, maybe you're purchasing just um, a new home, maybe you're moving out of your first home and you're buying another home, um, awesome tool to use just to kind of see what that DTI number is um, to see, you know, even if you would qualify for a particular home over a certain amount, okay? So definitely... Keep this in your arsenal too, right? Um, it's just one of those tools that we've been discussing throughout the series to help you along your financial journey. No matter where you are in your financial journey, I'm sure that one of these tools you would find to be beneficial. I know I definitely 
have used every last one of these tools in one way, shape, or form throughout my financial journey. Not so much the DTI anymore because I'm in my house and I feel like I might be here for a while, <laughs> but definitely something that I utilized when I was thinking about um, buying a home, right? So um, again, hopefully all of this has been helpful. We are going to have um, the link for this tool as well um, so that you can download it, but you do have to become a member of our private group in order to be able to download this tool. So we are going to encourage you to visit our Facebook group. It is uh, Cutting Your Taxes 101, um, Debunking the Tax Myths, okay? And so make sure that you find us on Facebook. Make sure you join our private group, Cutting Your Taxes 101, and we share a lot of useful tips. Um, we like to do a lot of date reminders for our members um, because we want you to make sure that you are planning throughout the season, right? Tax planning is something that you should be doing throughout the year. It's not something that you should only do from January until um, April, right? So not the first part of the year only, but something that you should definitely be doing throughout the year, okay? It's a mindset. You gotta change your mindset around tax planning. Um, so with that being said, make sure that you visit the group so that you can download this tool and the many other tools that we've been sharing with you throughout this series. Um, and again, hopefully this has been a very informative series, a very insightful series. Um, hopefully you are learning a lot and you are able to retain a lot and watch this in replay. Like I know I moved through fast. Um, because I'm really familiar with Excel and really familiar with the tools because I created them. But definitely watch it in replay. Um, take a moment to read the introductions in their entirety so that you can get an understanding of why we created the tool and how to properly use it. Um, and feel free once you join the group, if you have questions about the tool, definitely um, post your questions. Um, so the, everyone in the group, right, we're all learning together. We're all on this financial journey together. And so we want to make sure that we all win. That's my mantra. So um, we definitely are there as a so source um, of information and knowledge um, and hopefully um, the skills and the knowledge that we've acquired over the years would be beneficial to you, right, throughout your financial journey as well. So Post those questions. We would love to hear from you and we would love to um, connect with you and, and tell us like what you think about the tools too. So while you're there um, and you're downloading these tools, let us know what you think about the tools. Let us know what we can do to make them better. Um, let us know what other tools you would like to see because maybe we can get to work and create some of those for you as well. Um, so again, thank you so much for joining on tonight, Five Finance Family. Again, this uh, tutorial edition of Flip It. I know I have had fun <laughs> throughout this whole series. I hope that you have as well. Um, and so again, we appreciate you logging in and taking your time out through your busy schedule. But until next time, Five Finance Family, you all have a blessed and wonderful Tuesday evening. See you.